welcome to our service. Uh, just so you're aware, the, uh, there obviously won't be a live stream today, but we are recording this and it will get put up later today so that anybody, so if you know someone who can only participate by a live stream, let them know. It'll just be later in the afternoon. There'll be some uh, announcements on that on the pages as well. All right, our liturgist for today is Beth. Beth is filling in for Kathy, so she will handle some welcomes and announcements. Okay, welcome all of you. We're glad to see everybody here this morning. Um, these are the announcements. Advent begins November 27, and there are Advent booklets with scripture readings, reflections, and prayers available on the foyer table. There are also a few November, December issues of the upper room. And going along with that, before the 27th, no, yeah, we're having the decorating of the church. Here, yeah. So your bulletin tells you when that is. Uh, well, no, it's 10 o'clock on the 26th. I see that part of the demo. Let's get that. 10 o'clock, 26th. Can I say something? Yes. So that will also be a family kind of event, so we'll have hot dogs afterwards. So if you could let us know if you're thinking of coming, we'll make sure we have that. There you go. Thank you. So lunch provided. Hot dog. A lovely hot dog, right? Because no, we don't want anything crazy after Thanksgiving. Just hot dogs. <laughs> All right. There are free oil changes today after the potluck certified mechanic Lynn Shiny. We'll have an oil change station in our parking lot to give free oil change service to anyone who needs one. You provide the materials, like the oil and the filter needed for your vehicle. The office will be closed Monday and Thanksgiving Day. It's time to deck the halls with boughs of holly, so all of you people from Clarkston, and if any of you from Lewiston want to come and help, that's fine. On the 26th, Saturday, at 10 o'clock in the morning, is when you should come and we will decorate this place up. Um, we have new banners to put up, and uh, I'll get busy and make a new one for the lectern and new ones for the table. Um, we'll have all kinds of fun stuff. And this year's Advent Book Study will meet for the first time on Sunday, November 27th at 6 at Lewiston First. This is the the book, book for the study is Light of the World. And happy birthday this week is goes to Rose Mangini. And I don't have anybody else. Are there any others? Birthdays or anniversaries this week? I just want to add to the book study. So the uh, material we'll be discussing is the introduction and chapter one. All right, so have that read by next week. It's a nice, they're quick, easy little thing. So. And if you don't have a physical copy, uh, there's audio and um, an e-copy available through Amazon. Okay. All right. So, does anyone else have any announcements that need to be made this morning? Yes, Judy. I found a ring in the sanctuary, and I have it with me. And anybody knows of anybody who lost one? It was back here, so I'm not sure whether it would be that fire or. A ring? A ring. Okay, so if anyone lost a ring, Judy is in charge of taking care of it. All right, so please stand as you were able for the gathering words. Great is the Lord. God has redeemed God's people. Let the heavens shout with joy. Let all the people celebrate God's awesome love. Shout and sing praises to God. For God has healed and restored God's people. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please open your hymnals to number 103. Immortal, invisible God only one.
hand, I will come around with a microphone. Once you have the mic, uh, state your name and then share whatever you're comfortable sharing. We'll respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. And then we'll join all together for pastoral prayer and the Lord's prayer. I'm Judy Jacoby. I have a joy. Well, yesterday we had our pre-Thanksgiving Thanksgiving. Our kids were all home and our grandkids and their friends. It was just, it was a delightful day. We had a fish fry and it was so fun. Our son cooked so much fish every day. We had home with them. The other thing, our granddaughter, Cece, who our church has been helping support in college, um, is taking a job for four months up in Alaska. In January, until the middle of May, she'll come back to walk for graduation. And her major is in crop management. Well, she's going to be working in fisheries. She's going to be up there outside of Wrangell on a little tiny island, separate from everything. And it should be quite an adventure. She's very excited about it. Um, room and board is provided. There's going to be six people, I think, working there. Is that what she said, I think? Six people working there, three gals three guys. They have like little cabins I'll be staying in. Her dad's not too sure about this. Her mom says, well, let's try it. And uh, she is thrilled to pieces. So, because her other I thought was doing um, aquaculture. So, this way I'll give her an idea of which she, way she wants to go when she actually goes for her master. So, we are thrilled. She has a job and she is too. Thank you. Lord. and I have a prayer and a praise. Um, prayer, I would ask prayer for the families and the, speaking as a teacher, the teachers and the, the other people affected by the loss of the young people that we've had in the last month. It's been, been very, very difficult. Um, and because that's been so difficult, one of the things that I decided I really needed to do to feel better is go see my grandkids and my dad. <laughs> so I'm asking for um, traveling mercies and wet watch, weather watches and just blessings on everyone who's going to be traveling over Thanksgiving. Thank you. Lord. Uh, my name is Neil Seville. I'd like to ask travel mercies for my sister and my aunt and my cousin and my uncle. They're all traveling to Legoland for their Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, and she thinks she's going to be there for a while without actually messaging me everything that she's wrong. But um, I'd also like uh, prayers for me this next two weeks as my semester finishes up. And I made a list of to-do things yesterday. So prayers, please. <laughs> Lord. Here we are. I would like traveling prayers for my homie. And Nathan, who is, who, is tra who is traveling from 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 Spokane to Boston and New York. Lord, you are. Just so 
thankful that we can join with the Clarkson Church and you accept us and you come and do things with us. It's just a hallelujah. It's just a blessing to all of us. Thank you so much. Yeah, Lord. Lord. And you're Well, while I'm walking up, I just want to say it's great to see Joel. Yeah. Uh, Kirk recovered from a very serious surgery there. Thank you, Lord. Coffee, good. I would like to ask prayers for the Green family. Today is the first anniversary of their um, dad and husband's death. Lord. Lydia is my name. I've um, been going through a case with my children in custody, and I just ask for prayers of safety for my children and family. Thank you. Lord. We need to ask prayers this morning, too, for Darlene Larson, who left about 8.30 this morning for the Cubs area, and her daughter, Carrie, who is having surgery on Tuesday, Darlene was driving, so she took everything she needed for Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> she says she'll be back in a week, but, you know, it depends on the roads. So please pray for Darlene's safety on the road and Carrie's surgery on Tuesday. They're going to take a bone out of her hip and put it in her neck. And hopefully that will solve her neck issues. Lord, here is our prayer. And that I will ask for some prayers for Lisa. She hurt her back pretty badly at work on Friday. And uh, actually, she couldn't move for an hour and a half off the floor. I, tried, I came and tried to, she wouldn't let anyone else, so I came and tried to get her up off the floor. When that didn't work, they called in the uh, EMT to order and move her to uh, Tri-State so she could get uh, some muscle relaxers and they took x-rays. Um, x-rays were not conclusive for anything like holding discs or anything like that. I have to take an MRI for that. But they wait like a month with that stuff like that in case, you know, it calms down and it's just muscles that way, you know, no extra stuff. But she's in a lot of pain and is able to move a little bit more today, yesterday and today, but a lot of pain. So. Please pray for Lisa. Lord? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, if you would please join me for a pastoral prayer, and then all together for the Lord's Prayer. God, we come before you as a, a joint community today. But really, God, we're just we're just one. We always have been and we always will be united by our common bonds, our love for you, our love for our neighbors, our love for each other. And God, we're thankful that we can celebrate together. As Mary mentioned, uh, just many different things able to do together uh, to build and on that uh, unity, Lord, and on that fellowship. God, we lift up to you these concerns. Today we pray for all those who are traveling, um, major distances, of course, we think of Nathan's friend who's traveling from Spokane to, to Boston. We pray for safety there for a good journey and arrival. We pray for Tom and Tana as they travel to. Lord, we pray for Darlene as she heads to uh, her daughter's home. And she's got all the, the goodies, all the, the fixings for Thanksgiving. We just pray for a good journey there and back. Lord, we pray for uh, Rosie as she also is traveling. Lord, for the holidays to see family, and we're thankful for that. We pray for Cece as she is heading towards Alaska soon uh, to participate in this uh, about four month, four or five month uh, occupation. Lord, we pray for a good and uh, productive time there that she would learn more about herself, more about uh, all of the ins and outs of Aqua farming and culture and uh, the fisheries and Lord we just pray for <clears throat> her path from here on out. Lord we pray for those who are uh, definitely reeling from the loss of so many young people in the last month. 
We pray for the families of the four U of I students. We pray for the families of those uh, impacted here close to home by students, uh, freshmen, in the last month, month and a half, who've lost their lives to car accidents and different things, God. We just pray for everybody who was mourning loved ones. Lord, we lift up a family who's uh, um, walking through a one-year anniversary of the loss that Kavi raised. Lord, we also pray for those who are um, working through school still during this time, semester. I think of Kate Lissa and her two and a, about two and a half weeks left in the to-do list that's growing. We pray for peace of mind for all students during these months that are coming down to finals, midterms, and all these different things. God, that their mental health would be protected, that they would uh, seek out uh, UV light however they can, God, through these dark months, uh, not be sequestered inside in the darkness, but uh, would uh, refill their, their tanks so that they not um, be dragging through these months, God. Lord, we also pray for Jesse's um, mom and, and uh, stepmom. We pray for uh, their situations. We pray for God. We all we pray for all people who are in that situation right now with the, everything just uh, going on with your mom's coming and all that. God, we lift up those who, uh, as Jesse mentioned, just maybe holding on to prayer requests, didn't feel like sharing them. But God, we know that each and every one of us carries something. So God, we lift that up to you and pray for your hand evidence in our lives. Lord, we pray for Lydia and for her journey with her uh, children and the custody battle there. We just pray, God, that uh, that a resolution would come and it would be the right one and a healthy one. And God, we pray for Lisa and for her back. We pray for healing there. We pray for Lord, we just pray that she would uh, take it easy during time so that it not be tweaked or, or harmed anymore. God, we're thankful for the successful surgery that Joel had, able to see him here today after a, a, a major surgery. We're just so glad for his presence. And God, I'm sure I'm missing lots of things, but God, we lift them up to you. You heard them all, and we know that you will work in and through these situations. We trust in you. We believe in you. We're thankful that we can lift these up to you. And God, together we come to, uh, to, together as a community, uh, offering up as one voice the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> At this time, our scripture will be from Luke. And uh, that uh, <coughs> I'm reading from Luke 23, verses 23 through 33. It's page 89 in the New Testament section of the Bible. Trying to do as good a job as Kathy would have done. <clears throat> the soldiers brought them to the place called the Skull. There they nailed Jesus to the cross. He hung between two criminals. One was on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. The soldiers divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood there watching. The rulers even made fun of Jesus. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and poked fun at him. They offered him wine vinegar. They said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A written sign had been placed above him. It read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there made fun of Jesus. He said, Aren't you the Messiah? 
Save yourself. Save us. But the other criminal scolded him. Don't you have any respect for God, he asked. Remember, you are under the same sentence of death. We are being punished fairly. We are getting just what our actions call for. But this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, What I am about to tell you is true. Today you will be with me in paradise. That is the reading of the scripture. Thanks be to God. All right, at this moment we'll have the kids come forward for our little children's sharing time.
soothing sounds of the bass back there. All right. As the uh, choir folks get settled there, uh, today I'm introducing you to, you, uh, I don't know if we uh, always play this up every year, but we always try to commemorate it as Christ the King Sunday or Reign of Christ Sunday. So Advent starts next week. Our Christian calendar, the year, begins next week with Advent, week number one. And we always close out the Christian calendar year, the liturgical calendar, with Christ the King Sunday. So we have these great banners that represent, you know, the, the crown, the cross. These were made by, uh, they were, uh, I, I believe they were designed by Larry Ferguson and then handmade by some folks here in the congregation. A lot of them are simple, but speak a, 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 a simple, powerful truth of Christ the King <clears throat> that we end the year with. Now, when I get to this time of year, I see the frost on the ground. I see sometimes snow around here every now and then. A car will drive in from, you know, up at, out of the valley with some snow on top of their roofs. And it takes me back, especially with this being Christ the King Sunday, it takes me back to a game I used to love to play in elementary school when the Snow clouds would come to the school and clear out the driveway and pile up big, huge piles. A mountain, or I guess you'd call it a hill. A hill of snow, and all of us would play king of the hill on top of that pile of snow. Loved it. That was my favorite thing. I was a, <clears throat> this may surprise you, but I was a little tank, you know, down <laughs> up on top of the, that hill, and I would dominate that hill, you know? <clears throat> It would take legions of other children to pull me down from off of the top of the hill. I love to play this game on the playground, King of the Hill. I don't know, anyone here ever played it before? When you were, you know, who was here still playing it? <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Some of you I recommend, take it easy, okay? But uh, yeah, it's a fun game. And uh, so, you know, you know, in case you don't know how it works, somebody would climb up to the top and they would uh, clear, you know, make sure no other child was there. And that person was the king of the hill until other children came and pulled down and claimed the, the throne. And kids would come running from across the playground to come try to take off the person at the top, you know, whooping, yelling, hollering, all that stuff. And in winter especially, it was fun because piles of snow, but also you had the big puffy coats on so there was some extra padding, you know, when you tumbled down the mountain or the hill, especially as it froze and over and over and over and got kind of hard. And whoever was on top at any given time was the king of the hill. Usually it didn't last very long because the recess monitors, you know, would come by and go, I don't think they should be playing this game. Or would, uh, so we would wait until after school was over and try it again. My mom, you know, I, I, I remember the first time I came home and told my mom the great news that I was king of the hill for the longest. And my mom was not as pleased as I thought she would be, mainly because I took my coat off and left it there at the, the <laughs> snow mountain. Because, you know, after so long of being the king of the hill, it, it gets hot up there, you know, so you got to take the, the coat off. Uh, so I stopped reporting the news to my mom. <laughs> but, you know, putting it in perspective, it was just a playground game. Right? I know at the time it felt like big news. I was the king of the hill. This is huge. At, maybe after I told my mom and my dad, maybe they pretended to be excited for a little bit. But you know what? Nobody from the newspaper came and wrote an article about how I was the king of the hill for a while. No front page article announcing local boy becomes king of the hill. Um, and it really didn't, you know, it, maybe the euphoria lasted for a few minutes. Really, it's not all that different, in a sense, from the story that we find today in the Gospel reading. And this is why, right? Today's the last Sunday of the calendar of the Christian year. Next uh, week, we start it all over again with Sunday. This year is what we call Year C. So if you're unaware of the calendar, how it works, the, the uh, years are divided up into three years. Year A, Year B, Year C. And in those years, Year A, Certain sets of scripture are read, year B, certain set, year C, and the gospel always changes for those years. This year has been Luke. So we've been walking through sometimes the book of Luke and hearing how Jesus interacts with different people. 
lepers. Um, we talked about his interaction with Zacchaeus. Remember that one when he was up in the, the tree? Or with uh, a lot of rich people and his interactions with them. We watched him heal the sick. And here we are at a place finally where we can sum up all we know about him, where we can uh, usually sum up things here at the end with Christ the King Sunday, crowning him king, uh, even though, of course, we know every day he's king. But we celebrate this here on Christ the King Sunday. And here we go. We open up the scriptures for this year's Luke. Luke is the book. And what's the passage that gets read? And Christ the King Sunday. It was Christ on the cross. What a, right? It doesn't look like much of a king at all on the cross there. Luke says that Jesus had a, a couple of convicted criminals marched with him out to this hill, this place of the skull, Golgotha, or the city of the, or the uh, hill of the skull, where they were all crucified. Which was not unusual in that time and place. Crucifixions were, were the way that the Roman government helped maintain control. They dealt with troublemakers, <laughs> hanging them up on crosses, oftentimes along roads so that people would walk by them and see, or up on hills so that people could see them from all over the place and, and say, ooh, how did they make the Roman government mad? We shouldn't mess around with the Roman government. And there, in this here in Jerusalem, the place they left to use was the place of the school where they took Jesus probably outside the city a little bit, maybe a pile of dirt or rocks littered with more than likely skulls and bones of others who've been executed here. Luke says they crucified Jesus, which means they nailed him to a cross, they lifted him up and hung him up there to die along with two others, one on his right, one on his left. And somebody, maybe one of the soldiers, took a sign, hung it up on top of the cross over his head, and then said, this is the king of the Jews. So apparently it was a custom to hang a sign over those being executed with their charge or some statement about why they were condemned to death. And on either side of Jesus, these two men were told they were thieves, but actually more than likely, uh, the word that uh, comes to us from Greek and Aramaic actually has more to do with rebellion, uh, sedition. So perhaps they were minor leaders of some revolts or trying to uh, rile up a crowd. They were hung on either side of him with their signs, maybe. We don't know. It doesn't exactly say. Um, but there they were. There they were put on top of this hill. They were displayed there so that everyone would walk by and learn their lesson. We don't mess around with this empire. And here we go, when the religious authorities, when they brought Jesus in front of Pontius Pilate, they asked Pontius Pilate to deal with this troublemaker. They told him, hey, he's calling himself a king. So the sign over the head said, this is the king of the Jews. It was there to tell everyone who might be looking this is what the Roman Empire does to people who try to make themselves king. There is no king but Caesar. Now, if you've read the text, if you know the story, that's actually not why the chief priests and the elders had problems with Jesus. They didn't care if he called himself a king. They didn't have any loyalty to Caesar. In fact, most of the time they had problems with Caesar. Their problem with Jesus, as they said over and over, was blasphemy. That the things he did and the things he said equated himself equal to God. And according to their law, anyone who did such things must be put to death. This is in their Old Testament uh, book of Leviticus. In this gospel they say, if you are the Messiah, that is, if you are God's anointed one, tell us. And Jesus says, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. For from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So then all of them are asked in Luke chapter 22, are you then the Son of God? And Jesus answered, you say that I am. And for them, that settled it. What more testimony do we need? We've heard it ourselves from his own lips. 
So the religious authorities wanted him dead because he claimed to be not only the Messiah, but also the Son of God. The Romans wanted him dead because any claim to be king was a threat to their sovereignty. In the end, it was the Romans who nailed him to the cross, but, it was the, but the charge over the head could be read both ways. This is the king of the Jews, <clears throat> it said, meaning this is what we Jews do with blasphemers who claim to be the Messiah. And this is what we Romans do with insurrectionists who claim to be king. Either way, this is an odd passage to choose for Christ the King Sunday. Because when it is clear that claiming to be king can get you killed, why would we dwell on this passage of scripture? When you put this scene in perspective, it becomes even more pitiful, doesn't it? Here are three men dying on a dusky hill, some far away corner of the Roman Empire. And not only are they dying, but they are being executed as criminals. One of them has a sign over his head saying, this is the king of the Jews, but it's easy to see that this sign was meant as a joke. Nobody thinks he's king. The religious authorities taunt him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers come next. They mock him, and they say, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And one of the criminals even joins in on the mockery. Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and save us too. But the other criminal, the so-called good thief, rebuked the first one by saying, hey, don't you even fear God. You're under the same sentence. And we have been condemned justly. We're getting what we deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And so he said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I don't know why he said it. Who knows why he said it. Maybe he figured that under the circumstances it couldn't hurt. Right? But Jesus, who by this point could hardly even lift his crown, uh, thorn-crowned head, receives the request as if he were just such a king. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, I'm guessing that this story the next day didn't make the newspaper headlines. In the context of the sprawling Roman Empire, you've got to think about how vast their territory was. In the context of this massive amount of land, this one little person with a small group of followers, 12, maybe 50, 70, all disappeared mostly by this time, except for some women and one disciple. Not very newsworthy in the grand scheme of this massive empire <clears throat> where they crucify people every day, all the time. It didn't matter that there was a sign over Jesus' head. It didn't matter that for a few agonizing hours he might have been the king of this little hill called the Skull. Because now he's a corpse in a borrowed tomb. Within a few days, they no doubt thought his life and death would pass out of the memory of all people. We'd all move on. Next Messiah, please. Except for this one little thing. According to our best and most reliable sources, Jesus didn't stay dead. On the third day, as we say, he arose, and that changed everything. Now, some, I know that there are some people who wrestle with the physical resurrection of Jesus. I did it. I understand. It's not something we have a personal experience for. From a purely scientific point of view, it, it doesn't make sense. In fact, it might seem impossible. But if something like resurrection hadn't happened, do you think you would be here right now listening to this sermon? Do you think there would be an estimated 2 billion Christians around the world? Don't you think that Peter, James, and John and the others would have just moved on, shrugging their shoulders, and saying, as the two disciples did on the road to Emmaus, we had hoped that he would be the king that would redeem Israel. 
We had hoped, past tense, not anymore, but something happened. Something happened. Those two disciples on the road to Emmaus encountered the risen Christ, and then so did Peter, and so did James, and so did John, and so did all the others, and word began to get out that Jesus, who had been put to death on a cross, was alive again, and suddenly this story was the story everybody was talking about. So that 50 years later, when Luke got ready to write this book that we're reading from today, they were still talking about it. And he could take down almost word for word their recollections of what had happened. One of the stories they told was this one. What happened on that awful day when Jesus was crucified. In their story, they told how a sign had been hung over his head. This is the king of the Jews. At the time, it was a cruel joke. It was a way of mocking him. But now, looking back, they could see that the sign was truer than the person who made it intended for it to be. Indeed, Jesus was, is, king. And those religious authorities, those soldiers... And that bad thief who kept saying, if you are a king, then save yourself. Well, he was. And looking back, the church could see it. And that good thief who said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Well, who knows what he was really thinking. But I believe that Jesus was as good as his word. And that no one was more surprised to stroll through the gates of paradise than that astonished thief. If you believe that Jesus was as good as, as his word, then you can now see how this pitiful scene from Luke has been transformed. That wretched man on a cross with a crown of thorns on his head really does become the king of kings and lord of lords. The sign over his head reads true and the things people are saying about him, even though they are mocking him, are true. He is king. He is king. But you can't blame him, can you, for mocking him. You can't blame them because they assumed, as we probably would too, if you have power, Jesus, why don't you use it to save yourself? Any other king would, wouldn't they? Most kings would. But not this one. The surprising thing about Jesus is that he uses his power not to save himself, but to save others. And let me ask you, if you could choose between a king who would use his power to save himself and a king who would use his power to save others, which one would you choose? I have to tell you that sometimes when I go to vote, and I don't like the candidates, which is like 99% of the time. <laughs> I sit there and I look at the ballot and I say, who would give their lives for me? <coughs> and if I can't say yes to either one of them, I'd like to write in Jesus. <laughs> if you are a king, the religious authority said, then save yourself. If you are a king, the soldiers said, then save yourself. If you are a king, the thief said, then save yourself. But Jesus turned out to be the kind of king who cared more about saving others than saving himself. And so he hung on that cross under that sign until the work was done. I don't know what kind of king you want, but if I could choose, I would choose a king like that. Let's pray. <clears throat> God, on this Sunday, where we recognize the reign of Christ, we recall your reign, your power is different than what we imagine power is like. It is so different. It's better. It's better than the power we look at for 
and we try to find and cling to is better than the power of presidents and kings. But it is the power of real love. Real love. I poured it all out for the sake of others. That, that is my king. That is my king. And I thank you for that. God, we love you. We thank you. And in the King, in the name of the King, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. At this time, we turn to our offering. And uh, I believe there will be some ushers that come around with the offering plates. And we want to thank you for your generosity. If you are here from the Lewis, if you want to church, if you uh, want to mark that it's for Lewiston, we'll make sure that gets set aside and that that gets to uh, Lewiston for you. Uh, and that will, you can trust our counters, I trust them. <laughs> they, will, they will make sure it happens. But if you need an envelope, there might be some in there. If not, you know, just put a little note, wrap it up. We'll make it work somehow. Um, but uh, we do appreciate your generosity for allowing us to minister in the name of the King here in this valley. Thank you.
service. Reminder, there's a potluck right after that in here in the fellowship hall, so join us for that. Also at 12 noon, we will begin our oil change service. Glenn Shivey is the master behind the hideout, so we love this idea that he came up with. So 12, to, I think you'll be there about 2, 12 to 2, somewhere around there. Uh, so if you want to go grab your oil and filter and come back, and uh, he'll set you up. Uh, if you can't get your oil and filter out, you know, I don't know, today those things might be closed, not sure. But I know he plans on doing it at least quarterly, so heads up for next time, right? Walmart's open. Huh? Walmart's open. Walmart is open, there you go. <laughs> can, let me know, I'll run and get it for you too, all right? So uh, there you go. Please join hands and uh, let's see the response. After I sit off with benediction this week, may you... Serve the King in all that you do in His likeness by pouring out yourself in love for others. Peace be with you.